Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And many of you have emailed me this article. And about 90% of you all had a similar question. And the question was, how does T-Mobile achieve 14 times network capacity increase, which Neville Ray stated at this conference? So I tried to find the live link to it. There wasn't one, but he presented at the big 5G De Denver conference in uh, Denver, Colorado. He presented virtually, and there was some insightful information from what I was reading. But nonetheless, 90% of you asked, how does T-Mobile achieve 14 times the capacity? And in this article, or what he stated at the presentation, they're trying to do this by 2025. So before I want to get into that, I want to kind of backtrack. So earlier in the year, Neville Ray presented at a Nokia conference, and he stated already now as they're upgrading sites to 2.5, and a lot of these sites, believe it or not, don't have the full capabilities on backhaul. And back earlier in the year, around March, he was already referencing the 5G layer the ultra capacity layer that they're using the the sprint spectrum is already seven times faster than anything that LTE was able to do. So essentially from that seven times that that he was quoting earlier in the year, he's trying to double that capacity layer by 2025. So how do they get to 14 times the capacity increase that they're currently currently doing. So it's going to take several steps. One step, which I'm sure most of you will say is common sense, they have to get 2.5 on the entire grid. So I referenced this in another video. There is not one market right now in the United States that's 100% complete, meaning 2.5 is not on all the sites that T-Mobile has planned. I know within markets that have a larger county, and some of those counties go into suburban. For T-Mobile, it, it doesn't make sense to add 2.5 on every single tower. Some sites in lower populated areas that are not high traffic, the N71, band 2, band 66, band 4 combo makes perfect sense. I've seen sites hit 3, 400 megabits a second without that sprint spectrum. So not all sites are going to be planned for the 2.5. But to, res to get the capacity increase that 14 times that he's referencing by 2025, the first step, they have to get 2.5 to all sites that they have planned, which is going to take the extensive investment that we're seeing now. $12 billion this year, $12 billion next year, and then they drop it to $9 to $10 billion starting in 2023. According to their analysis, their financial analysis, that is sufficient spending for them to get the 2.5 to all the sites that they have planned. That is the first part. The second part, they have C-band. C-band covers, according to their statistics, 225 million pops. So they have they bought enough C-band to cover 225 million pops. In some cases, it's 40 megahertz. In others, it's 30. So they got to get that on the sites too. So that means another, another round of site visits for T-Mobile. And according to T-Mobile, once again, the funding they put forth, the CapEx that they guided up until 2026, also has enough money in it to deploy that C-band. So if you think about C-band at scale, I know 225 million pops sounds like a lot. But they really didn't buy it at a large scale. So they can deploy that rather quickly. That is also another essential part for them to get to that 14 times uh, increase in that capacity. The next part is that layer cake that T-Mobile has been referencing throughout the entire merger process. Layer cake, layer cake, layer cake. Low band, ultra capacity. That's being deployed now. And then the top of the layer cake is the millimeter wave. T-Mobile is not as engaged in the millimeter wave. Their planning does not show it. 
their strategy does not show it, and their action doesn't show it. If you look to one of their competitors in Verizon, their action strategy and plan looks completely different as you look towards millimeter wave. It's actually being deployed. It's not a stadium or higher traffic venue solution for Verizon. No, they're putting this in neighborhoods. They're putting this on small cells that are going where macros can't be built. And of course, Verizon has another, they're going to utilize that millimeter wave spectrum for fixed wireless home internet. So of course, it's going to go into the neighborhoods, but it has many use cases. It can offload a macro. It can do fixed wireless. It can handle, let's say the neighborhood is really busy and, and then there's a, a larger area of people that use the, the network heavy. Millimeter wave can handle that. Yes, I know millimeter wave is good for concerts and venues, Super Bowl, NBA games, and Verizon, they, they, they're deploying it there too. Except T-Mobile's strategy in on, the, in, on a bigger scale or the grand scheme of things, they want to deploy it where it makes sense. They've stated that many, many times. So I don't see a scenario where T-Mobile goes heavy and puts millimeter wave into the neighborhoods on CRAN. I, I don't see that. That might happen in rare cases. We've seen it last year at the Super Bowl in Tampa. They actually built a millimeter wave node that looks very similar to what we're seeing today from Verizon. So that's that's good to see from, from T-Mobile that they're utilizing it. But again, it was for a specific use case. It was a Super Bowl where they anticipated large larger crowds, larger data usage. So it was completely justified for that venue. And Verizon is doing the complete opposite. I'm hearing AT&T is also going to be very similar to Verizon, not as aggressive because they're not doing fixed wireless at that type of scale. But AT&T is also deploying CRAN in neighborhoods that are receiving millimeter wave. They're, they're putting it on, on street corners, on street lights. And that will result in, of course, for AT&T to be able to supply more capacity to these neighborhoods and its, its customers, period, which will result in a better experience overall for its customers. So, and that essentially is another part, as I mentioned, is that layer cake. T-Mobile has to get more of that millimeter wave out there to achieve that 14 times the net, uh, network capacity. I know it's being deployed in, in downtown urban environments where they have a super, super dense network grid on the macro, and there's, they're slapping the millimeter wave on the macro. Again, they're, they're not building the, the millimeter wave nodes on the street corners. They're putting it on the macro. In some urban environments, I'm being told it's completely justifiable. They have a very dense grid, especially now with the Sprint Keep sites, places like Chicago, New York City, Los Angeles are going to be off the charts if we're talking macro densification. Neville stated he would have the densest network in these environments. I'm being told that is still the case. Chicago is another example. The, the grid for T-Mobile there has always been the densest talking macros. Now it's going to get denser with Sprint Keep sites. So in I've seen it on videos in some cases in New York City, T-Mobile has a macro 1,500 feet apart. So it makes sense for them to add millimeter wave onto that. And that essentially is going to get T-Mobile to that network increase in that, four, that 14 times that Neville, Neville referenced. Of course, there's other parts, one major part being backhaul. The backhaul has to be sufficient enough to support the, the, what's on air. So you could put all the spectrum at the site that you want. If you don't have the backhaul to back it up, it's not gonna. It's only going to go as fast as the backhaul allows. So there's a limitation. So that that's essentially what it's going to take for T-Mobile to get there. Of course, there are areas where they're going to need more densification to get to that level. 
Will they do it with macros or small sales? That remains to be seen. They only have 50,000 in the plan. I know that sounds like a lot, but if you look at the entire U.S. and all the urban environments, then you might be like, eh, 50,000 may not be a lot. So they're going to do it with a lot of macros. I, I, I get the feeling that macros are going to be the, the, the standard for the company. I think small cells are going to be used in very rare and special cases as, as fill-ins, but it's not going to be the norm for T-Mobile. Small cells I'm noticing even here where I live are starting to become more of the norm. It's like you're driving down the street and, oh, there's a small cell. Oh, there's another. Oh, there's another. So there's, they're starting to pop up more and more. With T-Mobile, you have to go to all these different locations to spot them because they strategically built them to, to kind of help and support, which is what they're meant for, but it's not a part of the grid, if that, if that makes sense. So it's not like you're going to drive down a certain street and see a bunch of T-Mobile small sales. You might see one or two, maybe three or four, and then that's it. What I'm noticing with Verizon, it's like I'm going down the street and there's like 50 small cells all over neighborhoods, side of roads. And it's like in between two macros, they put a bunch of small cells to offload where you can't possibly build another macro dead smack in the neighborhood because they wouldn't get approved. They're putting these small cells. So... Just keep that in mind. All of that is going to play a factor. The backhaul increase, T-Mobile actually utilizing all the spectrum assets, which I'm sure they will to a certain extent. The millimeter wave is kind of the oddball here. I can guarantee you C-band 2.5, all that's going to be deployed. We already saw the multi-year investment in the 600 megahertz. He announced at this uh, conference that they are now covering 1.7 million square miles with the low band 5G up from 1.6 million covered so they're they're expanding that as well so again the investments are working uh, it's 12 billion this year total capex actually 12.3 they increased it on the last earnings call they increased that so that shows you that the guidance uh, that everything is working it's accelerating faster and t-mobile is able to make use of those synergies and increase capex could that happen next year Remains to be seen, but internally, they're ahead of schedule. They're trying to push. They want to migrate the Sprint base. Next year is going to be even more aggressive, so we'll see what happens. But again, 14 times the capacity is doable. They just have to follow that strategy, make use of all the spectrum, get the backhaul to... I, I want to say they got to have at least 5 gig to 10 gig backhaul links on air to be able to realize that. In the future, by 2025, I'm sure backhaul links will be able to go to 2025 gig. I know that's already being discussed. And we're going to get other technologies that will help boost speeds in certain cases. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Just wanted to make this uh, network update, give you guys a more detailed explanation. May have been a, a longer video, but let me know if you like it. If you have been on the channel or you're new to the channel and you have not yet liked, shared, subscribed, make sure you do so. Hit that notification bell so you are notified when I do upload content. Make sure to follow my social media outlets for more updates and interactions. Thanks again for watching. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.